What's going on, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube? This is Mark here, Waist Deep Wade Fishing, Southwest Florida. Look at how beautiful it is out there today. It is absolutely gorgeous. I want to say thank you for everyone for liking, subscribing, and sharing, and helping me get this company and get this channel to where it needs to be. My hat is off to you. Thank you to all of my sponsors that are out there. Aqua Dream Spoons, Chicken Boy Lures, Texas Rattler. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. And without you subscribers, I couldn't be here. So thank you, I love you all. Today, we're gonna talk about a certain subject. A subject that a lot of us fishermen run into. And it's very important. Especially if you're out there and you know you work Monday through Friday and you get, to, you get out on the weekend to Saturday and Sunday. And all week, the tides were good. You had good moving water, but then all of a sudden, Saturday morning, you're up at five in the morning, it's your only day off and you've got a slow moving tide and God knows we know what happens when the water isn't moving. The bite shuts down. So today's title and what we're going to discuss and tackle is how do we get fish to bite in slow moving tides? How do we get the snook, the redfish and the trout to bite our lure in this slow moving water? So we're going to start it off with tip number one. First thing is first, we all know that, foot, that fish need moving water. So if you see that you have a coefficient of 30 or 40, and you're usually catching fish around 70 to 90, well, what do you do? What you need to find on that grass flat is some type of drain or creek mouth or bottleneck where the water is pushing faster than the other water around on that flat. You may have to walk a couple of miles, or not say a couple of miles, let's say a couple hundred yards, but you can find a rip in the current, you can find a break in the sandbar, and you can find a grass ledge that is pushing water faster than the water around you. And guess what? When you find that spot, there will be fish feeding in there. That's tip number one. Tip number two. Let's say you do have a little bit of moving water and you still can't get bit. Now you've used all your baits, you've matched the hatch, you see what's in the water. You may have greenbacks, you may have pinfish, you may have needlefish, you may also have blue crab. And you're throwing everything to match the hatch and it's not working. What you need to do is change the profile of the lure that, are, that you're using. Throw something that does not look like what is in the water. So if you see a ton of pinfish out there, okay, as you're walking through the flat, throw something that doesn't look like a pinfish, okay? Throw something with a different profile. Maybe throw something with a skinnier long profile that looks like a finger mullet. Maybe throw something that looks more like a needlefish. Maybe throw something that, that has the imitation of, uh, uh, of a crab, okay? That would be another option for you to try on a slow moving tide. Tip number three, very, very, very important. If you're out there, and again, you've used these techniques that we're talking about and you're still not getting bit, what you want to do is throw something that will stand out, okay? Let's say you have, there is bait all over the flat, but it's slow moving water. And the majority of the bait, you know, it has a little green, a little white, a little silver. Do something out of the box. Get a lure with a color that stands out, something that's a bright orange or, or um, um, a chartreuse, possibly a red. Um, purple is an excellent color. Throw a color that contrasts what is in the water. So when you're throwing that bait and working it in that grass flat, those fish that may be spread out far in that flat that aren't moving and hunting will be able to see that color from a longer distance, track the bait, fish on the end of your line. Tip number four, and this is another important one. People fail to realize this, okay? Fish have senses, they have lateral lines, okay? If you have calm water, okay, number one, it's slow moving, okay? It's not overcast and it's sunny out. Okay, every move you make in that water, every time you take a step, those fish can feel that on their lateral lines. Okay, keep that in mind. Move in stealth. If you've got slow moving water, 
slow your roll, walk quietly through the water, make very, very long casts to potholes and where you can see the sections of heavy current. Okay, long casts, 40 yards, 50 yards, 60 yards. That's why I always use eight pound braid. It allows me to take my lures and cast them twice as far as the average fisherman. I can cover more ground and the fish do not know I'm on the grass flat. So that leads us to our last tip, our final tip, number five, a very, very important one, scent, okay? Now there's tons of scent out. There's shrimp, there's menhaden, there's freaking octopus, uh, you name it. There's 50 different brands out there that, 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 have, that make scent for your lures, okay? Anything that you have on your hands, when you tie on that lure, okay, that scent is going to rub off on that bait that you're throwing. If those fish, okay, don't have a heavy current, they're going to be able to pick up your scent on that lure. So make sure every time you tie the lure on, okay, and you have these particular conditions, throw scent on it, whether it be a shrimp scent, a menhaden scent, a blue crab scent, a ladyfish scent, a mullet scent. Make sure to always put a scent on the end of that lure when you have slow moving water. Now there's a time and a place sometimes there's no need for you to put scent on the lure, but in this particular situation when you have slow moving water and you're moving in stealth and you're trying to get the fish to bite, scent would be your best option. All right, guys, I hope this helps you out there on your inshore journeys. This is Mark again, Waste Deep Wade Fishing, Southwest Florida. Please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Help me get to that 1,000 subscriber level, and I will see you guys on the next video.